The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. It is no substitute for professional care by your doctor or your qualified health care professional. Never disregard or delay professional medical advice because of something you've heard on this podcast or in any linked material. Guests who speak on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Shirley neither endorses nor opposes any particular opinion discussed on this podcast. The views expressed on this podcast have no relation to those of any academic, hospital, practice, institution, or other entity with which Dr. Shirley may be affiliated. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty. This podcast is curated by Dr. Shirley Medea, MD, as the definitive source of holistic wellness through beauty. Welcome back to part two of the Forever Fab podcast with my guest, Trisha Lee. I like to say giving back is the new luxury. So clearly you exemplify that because you are passionate about contributing to your community. Yes, yes. And I love these events because I encourage, you know, questions that just aren't making sense. And I encourage people (laughs) to talk about how honest they are. And I start that by giving examples of things I don't understand still. And there's never going to be a short list of those things. (laughs) So I, I, you know, I share that and I'm like, okay, you want to see me as this businesswoman, but guess what? I don't really know what this means. You know, right. and I'm still trying to figure that out, but I right. brought my accountant here so we could talk about it tonight, you know? So that's exactly. kind of the idea of it. And I was so just pleased to see that my old brand had such great beauty events and everyone came out for them and they were packed and Aww. they were lines around the corner. But when I saw that happen in the financial space and it was beautiful black women lining up and filling buildings to the brim to sit and wow. talk about their finances and how they could you know, really, really get in their bag. That yeah. was just, I was surprised and I always have to be honest about that, but I was so happy. Yes. You as know? you should be. Well, yeah. you, you have I to wanted, let me I know was, when I the next one is. To, I will. I wanted to know that that was just as exciting as it was to yeah. come to an event and do hair and nails and makeup, you know? That's right. Yeah. 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 I agree. It was and, awesome. And that's fantastic. I, I really want to participate. I'm sure lots of our listeners do too. I would love that. Now, speaking of money and what matters and financial wellness and resilience over the course of your career so far, because obviously you're going to keep going and reach uh, new heights, but what messages or lessons have you learned about money that you think absolutely everyone needs to know? Oh, so many. Um, so I, <laughs> I, so many, right. you know, I was, I was really impressed by the importance of ownership and owning real estate and owning your home and investing in communities that had um, great potential. I definitely learned that very young. And when I got into um, doing retail development at Mac later on in life, I started to understand how retail stores choose neighborhoods and Mm. choose where they are gonna like kind of cluster and build like these amazing commercial strips, which then drives up the the local rents and then drives up the property values um, because you have all this destination business that people are traveling from all over to. So when I started to understand that, I knew that services and amenities tied in greatly to uh, um, neighborhood appreciation. Yes. So by the time I got into like opening my own business, I knew how to scout out locations because that's what I'd been doing for a company on on payroll. Like I was getting paid to do that. Yep. Um, And then you know, then, you know, owning my own business. So that was just, a. It, it, that was my first real estate really step there was owning my own business and choosing the neighborhoods that I wanted to expand into. So real estate came very natural and, and people, they think it's like, oh, it's from beauty for whatever, but it's like, no, it's beauty. But I'm like, I'm, I'm developing locations. I'm doing build outs. I'm doing construction. Yeah. I'm working with the city to get permits, you know, <laughs> like I'm working yeah. with architects to build these spaces. You may come here for nails, but somebody had to put these walls up and put electricity in here. So that's a part of it. And, and negotiating commercial leases. I don't think there's any clients that I ever had in my salon that didn't recognize that I was far more of a businesswoman than I oh, yeah. than I was a beauty girl, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what led to my real estate business taking off so quickly. Um, and I, it wasn't intentional. I wouldn't have known what I was doing. It just happened that way because when we would have conversations one-to-one, I would talk about the things that I cared about. And they, right. you know, and so they understood, oh, like, oh no, she's more, she's definitely more business than she is nails and beauty. <laughs> like this is just a, this is a conduit for her. Right. Uh, 
so when I started in real estate, I had just wrote a letter to all my clients. I sent a letter just letting them know, hey, this is what I'm doing. And, you know, sometimes I specifically said, sometimes your passions can become your nightmare. And that for me, that's mm-hmm. true. And I just need something that gives me more flexibility. Yes. Got a lot, I got a lot of living I want to do and I'm not doing it, you know, standing in these salons all day. Yes. And everyone responded really, really positively with that, oh, including wonderful. my including my staff. They were like, we get it. And I remember the, the lady, the young lady that had worked for me the entire 10 years, mm-hmm. she, she wrote to me and she's like, I always thought some, so I always saw so much bigger than this for you. Wow. What an yeah. affirmation. Yeah. And what yeah. an acknowledgement of your superpowers. Yeah. It was, that was like probably one of the best notes I got. And I got hundreds of notes, but you know, I was so, I felt like I was disappointing her the most because she'd oh. been so loyal to my brand yes. and she'd been with yeah. me for, you know, for 10 years. So that was the sweetest thing I think she could have shared with me was like, no, girl, go. Like, I see you flying. I want to see that. I'm yeah. sure you inspired her just as well. Yeah, yeah. And her, me, you know, coming to work every day, diligently working and yeah. having such an amazing work ethic, never having, like, her work was never off. She was yes. always on. And, like, when you work around people like that, yes. you're learning from them, too. Right. That's true. You know? Very true. Now, what yeah. would you say is the first step to becoming financially resilient? The first step to becoming financially resilient, I think, is really becoming realistic about your budget and about Mm -hmm. your income, you know? So I talk to women all the time, even in my personal life. Like, Mm -hmm. if it's not working, you've got to come up with something else. You've got to come up with something else. So whether it's a side hustle, a part-time job, um, you know, I speak to so many of just my friends that I've known for 20, 30 years. And, you know, I'm like... And I, I said this conversation with my girlfriends from college the other day. I said, at your age now, you should be consulting. Why are you going into a job every day? You should be twirling in and twirling out for a couple hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> and she's like, Trisha, why would you say that? And I was like, no, I'm just saying, like, you've been doing this for 20 years. You're kind of like the best at what you do. And I was like, and I don't yeah. even know what you do. I was like, well, why aren't you on a consulting level? Like, yeah. make, you know, four or five hours a day, just kind of twirling in. And, you know, she's like, you really think so? I was like, yeah, I really think so. I'm that girlfriend. I'm that girlfriend. We have one talk. You're going to be going out asking your boss for a raise. You're going to be going for a new job. Like that's that just what it is it's yeah. like from my mentors to my very best friends I'm always yes. like you can you can get more you can you can do more than that they can do better than that you yes. know or I, I help all my friends negotiate their jobs I think it's really about getting to where you need you need your finances to be yes. and sometimes that's living a little less yeah. you know, some, sometimes that's making more money there's no perfect answer but you have to right. get real about it because if you don't have a plan for change nothing will change right you know this and is true you can't just sit in these jobs for 20, 30, 40 years. You, they don't keep up with inflation. And you know yes. that, you know? Yeah, so I true. think it's getting, getting real at getting real about your money situation and coming up with a plan for how you want to change it is, is the first and foremost. And I know that sounds big, but it, it doesn't have to be that big. It could be literally just keeping your butt out of Sephora. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, <no>. me, <laughs> I speak for myself when I speak, <laughs> you know, but oh it, it, just making changes, you know, or, I mean, I've, I've had to survive off of absolutely nothing. You know, I remember buying my first apartment and I had to budget and live off of a hundred dollars a week for like 20 weeks in order to do that. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm that girl, like, I'm going to figure it out somehow, some way. I think figure that, it out. Yeah. You're and I think all women are very creative in that way. And so I think getting real about your budget is key and form key, key, key. And ownership sits right behind that, you know? Yeah. yeah. One, t- one is required for the other, obviously, but. Yes. Very true. Yeah. Do you, you mentioned mentors. Do you have mentors in your career and are they still helping you along? I do. I have like. I have a lot of mentees. I think I only have like, I had two mentors. I think now I only have one mentor, Mm. which would, which would be Ryan. Um, because it's, that just has organically happened at the firm, you know, and I, I always tell people I really came to Sirhan, um, because I, I thought that he embodied certain characteristics that I admire and I want to learn from primarily his humility and his, um, just his decency. Like he's just a, decent person you know like that's great to hear yeah and I've never at first I was like is he really that humble and then, I, <laughs> and then I was like well it never shuts off it must be accurate and then now I'm at the point I'm just like well it's so consistent it doesn't even matter like whatever yeah. it is so he's really really humble and I feel like he handles his immense success yeah. in a way that I want to learn from so I've always 
I'm only here for that reason. Like I think that a lot of things that will happen for me are destined to happen for me. So I don't think any one person or opportunity allows for that. You know, like I do believe in a bigger um, spirit than that. Yeah. But I, I know that you also have to be prepared for certain things and you need to grow in a certain way. And so my, my decision to come here was because I knew that I could grow from a leader like that. Yes. Um, And my other mentor passed away several years ago. I'm Um, sorry. Yeah. But he was wonderful. And, um, I, I'm, I've become really close with his wife since he has passed away. So that's been really good. Um, cause I always like admired her from afar cause I knew yes. like, you know, how he loved her, yes. but now I love her, you know, because I know her now and I have a relationship with her. So that's been really beautiful. That is yeah. beautiful actually. Yeah. That is yeah. beautiful. Now talking about, um, wealth and wealth management, how do you figure real estate investment, um, can work to help grow generational wealth and close the wealth gap? You know, I think we have so far to go because obviously, you know, we're going to we're just always going to be behind in that way. But the ownership conversation has dropped off so much in our in our community in the last you know decade. It yes. hasn't been lower than this since the 60s, actually. Oh, really? You know? So, yeah. So it, I, and I think it's a mindset of like maybe ownership just isn't even realistic, I think, yes. at some point, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I understand that and I know that that's real, but I encourage people to get creative because I'll tell you, when I meet these sellers that are 75, 82, oh my gosh. 81 and years still old. still going at it. And you know what I love about all their stories? It's yes. like, well, me, me and my cousin got together and we got this house and then me and, my, you know, and then we got that house. Like they work together. They yes. work together to do things. There's, there's no, I mean, I, I sold a house for a gentleman the other day for over $5 million. Oh, and wow. he bought the house for fifty thousand dollars. But he wow. bought the house. Yeah. But wow. he bought the house with wedding money. Him and his wife. Oh my um, gosh. Didn't take any money from their parents for the wedding, mm-hmm. and instead asked for money towards a down payment for a house that they just could not afford. Yeah. And they were buying this house for fifty thousand dollars at a time when their friends were buying homes for twelve thousand, fourteen thousand dollars. Wow. But they were they were buying a massive home with like yes. it was a nine family unit at the time. Yes. Um. So I, I always tell people, if that's how you feel, just know it's, it hasn't always been this way. I talk to clients all the time and it sometimes it's like, you know, five people get together and we first we get Trisha house and then we get Dr. Shirley house and then we yes. get Jimmy out, you know, yes. and then we just work until everybody gets a house. So I think that there are different creative ways to do it, yes. but it needs to happen because living in a home that's appreciating is another form of building your wealth. And that is why people put the majority of their money in yes. real estate. That is why the richest people in the world are rich through real estate. You know, it's because it's another form of an asset. And if you're smart about it and you're investing in areas like wonderful Brooklyn, like wonderful New York City, like all these wonderful cities, you know, there's tons of wonderful cities. Miami's on fire right now. Houston's on fire right now. But if you're investing in those cities that are quite honestly a little bit harder to attain, but they're unattainable because they have such a great return. They appreciate so beautifully. So it's about getting something. My first purchase was one hundred seventy-four thousand dollars. Wow! You know, wow. it's about getting something, right? Now, about and then that, that allows you to build. So about that getting something, are there any groups? Um, you know, women getting together and formalizing a group and saying, okay, every month everyone's going to contribute. I don't know, five hundred dollars, and we are all collectively going to buy real estate together. Are there any groups that exist that way that help to? slowly enter, you know, have people go mm-hmm. into the real estate market and serve as an educational, you know, group as well. Anything you know of? I know that there has to be because there's a lot of talk about that around me. You know, yeah. I think in New York, that's just a higher ticket price to, yes. to make that work. Of course. So it gets a little bit harder, but I have, I do even have friends now that are like, Hey, we should all get together and we should, you know, try to buy a large building and do things like that. So I think that that is the way to go about it. And just to be more trustworthy, I know that in maybe 2004, 2004, Mm -hmm. 2003, I wanted to buy a three family house on McDonough street with my roommate. And, um, you know, her boyfriend talked her out of it and her boyfriend was just like, why would you want to buy that old blah, 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 whatever, whatever he said. And at the the time the homes were going for the one I wanted was five fifty. I don't drive down that street anymore because I can't. (laughs) Because you can't face it. Oh my God. No, I can't. I'm just like, "Mm -hmm." lost opportunity. That sucks. It's triggering for me. I'll put it at that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, and, you know, and then getting into real estate 10, 15 years later and then seeing, you know, that that house eventually ended up selling. At one point it was on the market for 2.3. I know it's worth more. More than that now. Yeah. So um Are they still together? <laughs> what do you think? 
<laughs> oh my god! So if you're that girl. You're like, no, leave him. <laughs> yes, yes. He's not thinking big enough. He's not oh thinking big gosh. enough. Oh, and that's I how I ended you. up buying my co-op because I had enough money just to put down on something. And if I had found another me, we could have put on right. sleep, but we could have done something big. You that's know, that's right. That's right. But no one was thinking like that at the time. And if anything, I got ridiculed for buying a co-op and spending all that money for that small apartment. And, you know, and that's the story of my life is that what makes yeah. sense to me is always, it's just, you, so what are you doing? It's too, for other people. What do you mean you're quitting your job? Yeah, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to open a beauty bar. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm quitting my beauty bar. I'm going to go into real estate. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Later. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ms. Trisha, our time is close, is nearing an end, and I only have a few more questions for you. So let's yes. pivot back mm -hmm. to your original, your OG situation. Let's talk a little bit about beauty and wellness. Yes, my favorite. Do you, oh, right? <laughs> do you have a wellness routine? And if so, what do you do to de-stress and decompress? Um, I... I want to get to a point where I have a morning routine. <laughs> uh, I do. Hashtag I, I do. goals. <laughs> and I'm a morning person, so it doesn't make sense to me, but I actually have a night routine. Okay. I have a very, very regimented night routine that is near and dear to my heart. Um, if you're in my house, yes. we could be in the middle of a sentence at 7.58 p.m. <laughs> I'm going up those steps. Oh, my God. Like. I have left my house on my couch. <laughs> I have left my company with my man. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. I, I, I'm upstairs by eight o'clock. And primarily because, you know, like my family is, I would say they're probably up to like nine. And, and my, my partner's up until he's up to like 11 o'clock at night. But mm -hmm. that's my time. Yes. I love a bath. Yes. I love taking showers. I love baths. Um, I'm really into bath bombs, bath oils. Oh, yes. Yes. Really, really into that. And just taking that time to like, just come down. Um, you know, I'm like many, I used to say this was unique, but I feel like everyone just has a little bit of attention problems now and yeah. active oh. brain. And so I have to like work on that to really bring that down. And I think a bath is a really good way of doing that. I, um, I had a client that talked talk to me about taking baths and how they were so important. He had a massive bath in his apartment and I was like, what's the story? And he's just like, <laughs> Oh no, like this is huge for us and our family. Like everyone takes baths. Yeah. That's so pretty cool. I'm, I'm really into that. Um, I also listen to some meditation apps. I have these uh, sound, what's, I think it's called sound comfort sound, headphones. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, well, this is them actually. I don't know what, what they are, but Bose makes them and they're yep. like sound, sound canceling, noise quiet canceling? comfort. Okay. Noise, can noise canceling, but quiet comfort. Got Basically, it. When you have these things in your hair, you can't hear you can't hear anything that's going on around you. And then oh. so in that, I like to listen to rain or beach waves oh, at night. Yeah. I'm a rain yeah, girl. To, yeah. You know, sometimes fire, sometimes a little fireplace works for me. Yeah. But one of those three I do at night to kind of like just I guess to unplug really. Yes. Um, and then actually after I do that, I always end up watching really something really comical. I love to laugh before I go to sleep. It's really important to me. Some people yes. don't say you shouldn't watch TV. I like going to sleep in a really good mood. Yeah. So I watch, good for you. I watch funny stuff every night, but ultimately one day I will get to a morning routine and that would be very important. Um, I also, I, I go to a gym. I, I, right now I'm just going to the gym and I'm walking every day. Yes. But I, it's the routine of being there is more important to me than what Absolutely. I do there. Half I do the job that a lot. showing up. In general. So I do that a lot. Um, and then just practice wise, every Saturday morning I'm out taking care of myself. Good so it's you. either, um, well, it's always a massage on Fridays. I do a massage every Friday, which some people find weird. I find it weird that most people don't do that considering how stressful <laughs> our lives are. I know. I'm like, you live a stressful life. You should do that. Yes. <laughs> like weekly. Yeah. So yes. I do a massage every Friday. And then Saturday mornings, I'm either out getting my hair done um, or get, I get a facial once a month, every single month. I think it's more important to have good skin than great makeup. Yes. So I yes. love beauty and I, and I love beauty products and I should, I have no business in the Sephora anytime soon, <laughs> but I focus on my skin always showing um, and taking the best possible care of my skin. And I do that just by doing the most simple basic facials once a, once a month, every single month. Um, that's really important to me. And then I do therapy every other week as well. Um, that to me, is like mind, body, everything, it's all the same. Yep. I agree. I mean, the, yeah. taking care of your mental is definitely part of a wellness routine. I mean, it is quintessential. So I'm, I'm happy that you do that. Yeah. And, now, and when you do that, you're more inspired to do the other stuff. Absolutely. Now you talked about taking care of your skin. What is 
your personal beauty and skincare routine? You know, I I always profess to know everything, but lately I've been learning a lot more. I looked up and realized I had converted to pretty much all clean beauty, so I'm really yeah. proud of that. Good for it you. wasn't even a decision. It's just like, you know, you learn more, you do more. You, that's you get right. more educated. You're like, okay, you know, that's interesting. And yeah. so now I focus on using talc-free products, and I focus Good. on using clean, clean, green, uh, clean skincare products. I've been converting my my skin my products lately to more moisturizing. So I yes. use like an oil I use an oil form cleanser. I used to use gel everything, gel yeah. water based very everything. Very drying. Yes, and I have very oily skin. So in my mind, it was always to manage the oil. Yeah. Um, but I like a little shine. So I've always yeah. had, I was always that person that I would use oil free everything, but I would never blot my nose. Like I, I right. and I, I'm always shining. I don't care. Yeah. Um, but I do try to make sure that the skin care is good. So lately I've been getting into like um, more of like oil-based cleansers, gentle, like a balm. I remove my makeup with a balm. I think I'm meticulous with taking off my makeup at night. It's like a balm, for you. I makeup remover, Absolutely. then a gentle cleanser, and then I tone, you know, um, I either tone or I'll use like a hydrating mist. And then I use a moisturizer. I use serums every single night. Good for you. And the serums that I hate and the serums that I'm not happy with and all the products that I don't like, I use them on my hands and I use them on my feet. There you so. go. You found, you, you found a place for them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Totally. So I'm, I'm the first probably like, oh, this, you know, and I'll have it. And they're like, why are you carrying like this, this night serum in your, in your car? I'm like, oh no, that's my hands. When I get my hands are dry, you know? Oh my gosh. That's great. Yeah. And I, I love tell- luxury body products. Like yes. I'm really into like, I think like, I, I always feel like you get to a point where you have like your old lady habit. Like my old lady <laughs> habit is definitely like ridiculous body products, like creams and balms and yeah, yeah. scrubs and stuff. Like that's going to be my story. When you come into my bathroom, it's just going to be nothing but body products. Like, I know. Listen, I mean, for me that I old lady, young lady, middle-aged lady, whatever, that's yeah. my story for ever. <laughs> I'm, I've gotten worse. Than that. My, my grandmother always had like 500 bottles of perfume. And I was like, yes. what is this? But now I, I feel like yes. I'm turning into that just with something else. Cause now you walk into my bathroom, you're like, how many baths are you taking? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, we are, this has been such a beautiful conversation. Thank you again for your time. We are Thank at you. our final question. Yes, and of it's, course. It's the Fab Five. And the Fab Five asks of you, what mm-hmm. are your top five recommendations for living a fabulous life? Okay. I think the first one would be get real with yourself. And I think that the, a great way to do that is to decide what you know, that where you want to, to work on and how you want to work on yourself, whether that be spiritually, whether that be mentally, whether that be physically, but just get real with yourself and how mm-hmm. you see you, how you see yourself improving. I think that's super important. Um, I think the second thing is to surround yourself with people that pour into you as much as you pour into them. Yes. You know, your, your circle is huge. And, and I think that a big part of my success is, is my circle more so than it is me. You know, yeah. it's my, my inspiration. It's what I'm comparing myself to what I'm inspired by. I think that who you surround yourself with is so important and it's such a huge reflection of who you are. Um, and then I think it's important, like obviously to be hardworking and to be very hard and be very uh, focused. But I, I believe fully in, in hardworking and good living, you know, yes. and, and not just hardworking, um, I don't promote this like, oh, you know, I I, I have I can work that many. I, I just don't like that hustle mentality. Like yeah. I do think that there's a way to be successful without promoting burnout and yeah. without promoting how poorly we treat ourselves. Yeah. You know, like I don't you're spread in ten different directions. I don't I don't admire that. I don't right. I don't, you know, so I think it's really, really important to live a good life. Yeah. Um what's huge for me is taking time for yourself. Like if I don't have my two hours at the end of the day, everybody can feel it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like alone time and I do well with yes. alone time. And I think that there's something to be said for being able to enjoy your own company, you know, cause true. that's kind of how, that's how it starts. And that's kind of how it ends. <laughs> this is true. And true. <laughs> you know, and, um, and then last think, one. Num- number five would definitely be authenticity. I think that you, you be who you, you, you be yourself and then you just yeah. go where the, wherever that love is. This guy to call yeah. used to always say that he's like, go where the love is. But I think that's being yourself and then you'll find who loves you and who, who can appreciate yourself, you know? Beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Trisha. <laughs> I mean, wow. You're a star. 
Aww, like, thank you. Like you've got, you've got it down. And I know, I know that you feel that you have so much more to learn. I mean, we all do, right? But your Boy. star is, just, I mean, I call this episode the ascent, right? It was dedicated to rising to meet your potential. But I assure you, I, I know for sure that you are going to not only meet your potential, but you will surpass it. So I oh, hope to be you. able to meet you someplace beyond Mars somewhere sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but I congratulate sure. you on your success. And I am ever so grateful for your time and energy and your presence on this podcast today. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Please keep me posted about your workshop. And I absolutely will. I appreciate you. All right. All the best. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> This brings us to our close of this week's episode of the Forever Fab podcast with my guest, Trisha Lee. Looking to get into real estate? Contact Trisha Lee at sirhant.com. Sign up for her workshop series at trishalee.com. And also check her out on social at Love Trisha Lee and at Sold by Trisha Lee. As always, if you love this episode of the Forever Fab podcast, please share it and subscribe to the feed. Listen to past episodes or check out who's coming up next on foreverfabpodcast.com. If you enjoy listening to the Forever Fab Podcast and you want more, get more audio and visuals with a membership through Patreon. Choose the gold, platinum, or diamond tier for premium added content, special co-hosts, lifestyle videos, branded merchandise, and maybe even private access to my clubhouse by visiting patreon.com slash forever fab. If you're a founder or you represent a beauty brand and you want to be featured on an episode of the forever fab podcast segment of 15 minutes of fab, send me some stuff, visit foreverfabpodcast.com and fill out the contact form for general holistic beauty tips or to set up an appointment with me to discuss your personalized options for leveling up your beauty Visit elementsandgraces.com and sign up for my newsletter or just give us a call. And for an online e-consultation on time, anytime, and on your time, visit clicklift.com for your wellness, plastic surgery, beauty, and wellness questions on the go. That's click, C-L-I-C-K dash lift.com. It's time for the elevated house call. Jet Set Beauty Rx offers beauty on-call services near your home or other domicile, delivering beauty in the privacy of a medically equipped mobile aesthetics unit. Reserve your appointment at jetsetbeautyrx.com. Thank you for listening to this week's Forever Fab podcast episode. Until next time, stay beautiful and fabulous inside and out. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty, curated by Dr. Shirley Madir, MD. Live beautifully and help make the world a more beautiful place.